Welcome back to the Cross Border Interview Podcast. Today's guest is Calgary City Council candidate for Ward 8, Cornelia Weeb. Cornelia, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for inviting me. I'm happy to be here. Uh, as always, with my first question, I'm going to pose, where's your sense of duty come from? I think my sense of duty comes from the fact that I'm a citizen in our community. I think that I'm, we're all uh, part and parcel to the direction that uh, our community goes and certainly how we are as citizens and neighbours and stewards. And that's definitely where my sense of duty comes from. You can give back uh, to the community in many different ways, whether it be nonprofit, whether it be uh, through a business like yourself, like you have, or politics. You sh you've chosen in this election to do the political route. What was the decision based on? My decision to run actually stems from the fact that over the last two years, both as, again, a citizen in my community, a neighbor, a friend, uh, and also a business owner, a small business owner, I have really learned and felt for myself that council wasn't listening to the residents or the business community any longer. Uh, most certainly uh, the feedback I've had and what I felt to be true as well is that we were not being validated or prioritized at all. Certainly we felt and I felt that uh, council was talking about priorities that didn't align with mine and didn't align with what I felt really were the needs of, of Calgarians. So uh, being a nonpartisan uh, type of politic really appeals to me. I'm not interested in aligning with or subscribing to any one type of uh, narrative or ideology when it comes to politics. Uh, City Council really is about serving the community. And so, so that's what drew me here. One of the things that uh, a potential candidate does is goes out and asks questions to their neighbors. What were you hearing at the doorstep? You talked about it briefly there for a second that the priorities weren't lining up, but what priorities weren't lining up with what council was doing compared to what the priorities of the residents of Ward 8 were wanting? A few things come to mind. So I was actually already door knocking in the fall when I was preparing to um, file my nomination forms and make the firm decision that I would be uh, running for city council. And what I was hearing as far as priorities uh, were things like transparency, accountability. We were not hearing much of that from council, lots of closed door meetings, things where, uh, you know, we were sort of being told as a community what was going to happen, but never really understanding where the decision making was coming from. And I think also uh, talking about our economy, not just from a who's to blame, what's happening perspective, but actually starting to hear some leadership of how we were going to move forward as a city. Um, and it just really felt like we weren't hearing a lot of a lot of ideas or a lot of really strong leadership in that area. And folks are worried people were losing their jobs or had known other people who had lost their jobs. Um, taxes were a huge issue that were coming up, worried about how we we're going to pay for taxes, increasing taxes. Uh, so all of those things I had heard about in the fall, uh, which really was validating what I already knew as both, a, again, as a resident and as a business owner. So I've got to ask the follow-up question to that. Um, transparency, I'm hearing that a lot from a lot of candidates across this uh, uh, across the city and uh, from all uh, levels, whether it be uh, current councillors or potential new uh, councillors. How do you envision being more transparent with the residents and with Calgarians in the next term? Because that's the one thing I think most residents are looking for is it's great that you think it's a priority, but how? How do we fix it? So how do you envision fixing the transparency issue between yourself, council, and the residents of Calgary? For me, if I was elected, if I am elected city councillor, I will make it a priority to publish my opinion or perspective as to why I vote the way I do, for example, on priority pieces. Um, I think having engagement through community associations, hosting regular town hall sessions where, where residents can express to me their concerns or where their priorities lie. And I can also validate that by learning from them and really bringing those uh, priorities forward. I think that they're going to hear it from me because I'm going to be uh, always talking and referring to the residents of, of my ward. That's great. But sometimes you might have difference, difference of opinions of 
what you vote for and how you vote compared to what the people of your ward might want. How do you comprehend getting over that transparency issue? Because people might say, well, you might have made a backroom deal. There's always that negative undertone of city council politics where what you can be as transparent as possible. People are sometimes just not going to believe you. So how do you see yourself overcoming that obstacle? Because that will be a big obstacle that I think the next council will have to deal with. And we'll talk about why in a few minutes. But how do you see yourself overcoming that with difference of opinions? Well, as I've been campaigning already and explaining who I am as a business person and how I've always lived my life, uh, I'm, I am a fact-based decision maker. I really do look at all um, decisions from the lens of others. And so I gather perspectives, I gather opinion from all points of view, and I really boil that down and break that down into what is the most important um, I guess, shared sort of common goal through that information. And I think that if, if that's the place that I'm always coming from, I think that, that defending it uh, is, is really easy because I have a lot of uh, data to support the, the decisions that I would make. Um, on your website, and this is what I usually do before all my interviews, is go to the candidate's website. And for my viewers and my listeners, it's corneliaweeb.ca. The link will be in the show notes. So I highly recommend that you go out and check it out if you were in Ward 8. Um, but I, I want to pick up on what you just said there, that you are a fact-based uh, decision maker. Um, in the next council, there is going to be a lot of issues that are going to be arising one of the big ones and i think it's the biggest one that next council will have to deal with is the recovery from covid 19. it has changed the name of the game of when it when it comes to budgeting for uh, municipalities but also the future of how we plan out how do you before we jump into the actual minutiae but how do you envision all of calgarians moving forward in a post COVID-19 recovery process, because there are people who have been left behind, who are struggling to get ahead and the next council will have to deal with that. How do you envision that being done? Well, our priority has to be the economic recovery of the city. And so when we're talking about uh, bringing investment into our city, bringing new ideas, new technology, new energy, uh, you know, definitely the only way we're gonna move forward is by attracting new business to Calgary. Uh, we have to create uh, policies that are business friendly. Uh, we have to, again, we have to, in my opinion, I think we need to look at uh, extending beyond the economic recovery. I think part of that is also rebranding and remarketing Calgary to Canada and North America and ultimately the world, really. Um, I think we can't really move, we can't lift if we are all struggling. And so really, you know, the idea of, of making sure that no one is left behind really stems from having a, a really robust economy. And so that's absolutely priority for me. And the follow-up to that, and I think I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask this question, is every city is going through this issue right now. You, I think you've hit the uh, hammer on the nail here when you said marketing has to be done a little bit differently. We have to market ourselves differently. How do we attract investment, especially in Ward 8, where you are part of the downtown core, which has been hit the hardest when it comes to businesses leaving the city? How do we attract businesses back to the downtown core while we're trying to attract businesses uh, as well uh, as other municipalities, sorry, are, tr are trying to attract businesses, whether it be Vancouver, Toronto? And how do we market ourselves a little bit differently to ensure that we bring those businesses back and those, that investment back? Well, I think, uh, well, first of all, the boundaries have re rezoned for Ward 8. So uh, oh. that's okay. Uh, the downtown <laughs> is, uh, is, is no longer technically part of Ward 8, but it's, it is part of Calgary and it's a foundational piece to our recovery. So I'm happy, yeah. to, I'm happy to chat about it. Um, you know, again, I th when I think about years ago when Calgary really, uh, you know, sort of threw down and attracted all of the um, head offices for all of like the insurance companies and, 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 and all of our gas companies. Um, that was really, I think, a pivotal time for, for Calgary to really become a city, uh, you know, to, to, 
to hold its own in Canada. And it really grew from there. And that was really, I think, something that we can sort of look back on and we can sort of look at what those, um, what those policies policies were and how that that investment came to be in Calgary. And I think we can renew that with a new energy, um, with a new focus. But I think that creating those business friendly policies are incredibly important because, you know, I, again, I'm a small business owner, right? I want to be where I know I'm going to be the most successful. Um, that doesn't always just mean the economy in the moment. It means where I see a future for my company. Do you, do you believe that your business background and being a small business owner gives you a different lens and a different perspective to face the challenges that our city has moving forward? Because biz, small businesses have been struggling over the last year and a half. And uh, I'm assuming your small business has as well, because all small businesses seem to have been closed up, opened up, closed up. So do you believe your perspective is a little bit different and is needed on city council for the next term? I believe that my small business experience is critical to this role, actually moving forward. I think that because of my experience, I have that real practical understanding of how business works and how, how to measure expectations of performance, right? And also what, again, what really matters to business sometimes. And I think moving forward, I think we're going to hear this more uh, from companies, um, it's not always just the bottom line. Yes, we have to make money. Yes, we have to be profitable. We have to pay our employees. We have to, you know, be able to, to live and support ourselves. But at the end of the day, I think that we are also as a society, we are reevaluating priorities, right, in our own lives. So I think that part and parcel to the economy is also quality of life, you know, what, you know, sort of this work life balance. Uh, and I understand that because that's also who I am. That's the lens from which I am functioning myself as well. So absolutely, I think that it's it's the most important, the, one of the most important things about my running is exactly that. So how do we do that? Um, we are seeing biz, small businesses close up because of the turmoil that we've be, just been through, plus the economic downturn of the oil and gas sector being decimated over the last 10 years. But how do you envision city council working with our small business owners and this is the perfect question for you because you are a small business owner but how do you envision city council working with them to ensure that they don't close up or don't leave is there a policy that they can put in place is there a grant is there anything that you can say right now that is a priority to you that day one in council you will be helping the small businesses with x y and z we need to have a conversation with the province around taxes, around how we collect our business tax and our residential property tax. Uh, the city does not have autonomy over how that, how that, how that operates. Uh, basically, the city is the tax collector and the <laughs> province is the tax uh, sort of, you know, they, they redistribute those tax dollars back into the municipality, right? So in our case, I mean, when we're hearing the province talk about a fair deal, deal uh, for Alberta, I think that, you know, we need to maybe have a conversation about a fair deal for Calgarians too. We are struggling. We, as you pointed out earlier, all, uh, you know, major cities across Canada are struggling, uh, but we can't really support our small business if we are not able to financially um, allow them some reprieve and, and we desperately need it. One of the areas that I, I speak to residents about, and I've spoken to residents from Ward 10 where I am, Ward 8, Ward 7, Ward 12, Ward 1, and the one thing I hear over and over again is property taxes. Property taxes, property taxes, property taxes. They believe that they are not getting their fair share for the prices that they're paying with their property taxes. How do you envision, A, working with council to make sure that the services provided reflect the value that we're paying as a resident, as a property tax owner, as a property owner in the city of Calgary? Uh, well, that's interesting you say that because in the conversations I've had with residents in, in Ward 8, uh, many folks feel okay with paying their fair share okay. of taxes as long as, to your point, as long as they are getting the value for the dollar. And yes. so, and I feel the same way. I, I understand that taxes are a part of society. It's a part of how we fund our infrastructure and all of those great things. Um, but absolutely, I think that accountability, again, is really critical here. I think that I've had uh, folks at the doors 
bringing up highlighting points like we had recently uh, as a, a city employee who who earned almost a hundred thousand dollars in overtime pay like that is just complete mismanagement and complete um, you know in my opinion that's just a lack of respect for the taxpayer um, I think that we have to go back to administration and we need to hold them accountable for payroll and other things so I'm starting there absolutely awesome I, I do just to piggyback on that question it's, I've asked this question to everyone as the next city councilor, you will be there to represent the people of Ward 8, but you're also there to make decisions based on the best of all of Calgary. How do you envision working with a new council to better all of Calgary that might from time to time might mean the, the not getting a potential road repaved in Ward 8, a new sidewalk in Ward 8, uh, infrastructure projects might not be coming to Ward 8 because there's more priority to different parts of the war, uh, the city. How do you envision yourself working with a council to better the city, but also ensure that Ward 8 doesn't get left behind? Well, here again, I think it speaks to my business experience, right? It's prioritizing needs and wish listing wants. So I think, again, I think that Calgarians in general and folks in my ward certainly uh, appreciate that we are working together. We, we, we're communities within our ward, but we are part of the larger, larger picture. And so I think if we're coming back to, to our residents and we are itemizing why certain priorities are the way they are, I think that, I th you know, let's not sell citizens short, right, for understanding um, we all have the same, you know, priorities in our house. We're going to fix the roof before we're going to build a pool, right? Like if you have to fix the roof, you have to fix the roof. And whether that's my roof or the roof in another ward has to be done. And sort of, I think that that's, I think that we can really um, table those things for Calgarians and they can understand and respect why certain priority areas are, are chosen over others. So are, do you have the, do you have the, I don't want to say ability, but are you comfortable with saying, you know what? we can't do it this time because we have to worry about the X, Y, and Z before we get to your project that you are passionate about. And I, I understand that, but X, Y, and Z needs to come before the pool in this case. Absolutely. Yep. For sure. I think it just, that's, we just have to ensure that we are prioritizing the needs for all Calgarians first. And however that starts to, uh, outline itself within each ward. I mean, certainly every ward is going to need, you know, we're going to have our own priority pieces and I will stand up and I will absolutely champion for anything that is really important to, 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 to the residents of, of Ward 8. But we do have to understand that we are part of a city and we do need to work together. So it goes back to my a few questions ago, but what are the priorities of Ward 8? What are you hearing? What are like key points that you're actually hearing that you're saying, you know what? I have not thought about that. I need to, we need to address that at City Hall. We need this infrastructure project in Ward 8. We need this area fixed. What are you hearing from the people of Ward 8? Because when I talk to your fellow uh, candidates in Ward 8, they have given me a list of things that Ward 8 residents want. So what are you hearing that Ward 8 residents want or need? So, yes. So certainly, <laughs> I could, and, and that's, and exactly, that's how I really, you know, look at everything, right? Needs or wants. Um, so we do need to focus on some infrastructure, some basic, you know, housekeeping infrastructure, like sidewalks and streets. Um, I don't know if you've been through Ward 8 recently, but I, I, I can tell you certainly that I feel like my car is going to fall apart every time I drive down my front street. I mean, it is just in disrepair and folks feel um, they, and going back to getting value for your dollar, uh, folks in Ward 8 pay a lot of property tax. We have a lot of high value properties where they, of course, pay a significant amount of, of property tax. And yet these are some of the worst roads in our city. Um, so we do feel that, you know, the, the, the sentiment is that we're paying for urban sprawl, nice new roads out in the outskirts of the city, but we're failing to do the maintenance, right, of sidewalks and, and streets in our community. So things like that, which I think are, are you know, reasonable and certainly are, are, are measured expectations. 
Um, you know, but then we have concerns around Richmond Green, which is a high priority piece right now for folks in our communities talking about the idea, you know, of selling part of that land uh, in an effort then to take some of that or take the money um, effectively to repurpose uh, the green space, the park space. Um, so, you know, residents are concerned, why do we have to sell this piece of land in order to still have the maintenance in this park. So um, those kinds of things are definitely coming up. Um, but again, I feel for the most part, people are very reasonable with their expectations. They understand how this works. And, you you uh, literally took the question out of my mouth for my next set because I, I've gone through a lot of candidates websites and you were the only one that I've seen so far. And yet again, I haven't done all my interviews yet, but you're the only one who talks about supporting environmental initiatives by reducing carbon emissions and waste on your website. This is and I, I, a lightning rod issue because there it is a very divided issue. And while I agree with you, it is a divided issue. Is it a priority for the people of Ward 8? I believe it is in a small way, in a very sort of simple way, just sort of moving forward. Because we live in Ward 8, a lot of folks here really value their um, proximity to amenities, right? So they value the idea of walking or biking or having other means to connect. So not getting in their car and driving for 20 or 30 or 40 minutes to get to the grocery store or to go get a coffee. They value the idea of walking. So whether they sort of recognize that or respect that from an environmental perspective, uh, maybe they don't appreciate it fully that way yet. A lot of folks do. Um, but for me personally, um, I believe when it comes to climate initiatives and looking, you know, through, making decisions through that lens, uh, leaders lead by example. And that's a priority thing for me. I have lived in Ward 8. I continue to, uh, you know, live in an area that's close to my work so that I can uh, walk or bike or, or whatever I need to do. When I drive, I mean, I do have a small electric vehicle. That's important for me. Uh, you know, something that's come up recently, and we can talk about this or, or not up to you. Um, but, you know, looking at EV infrastructure, I mean, how do we transition our, uh, you know, our fossil fuel sort of, you know, combustible engine, uh, you know, auto, auto purchasing in our city, because we are a city that drives a lot. How do we move that into EV when we are not even putting that on the agenda as far as even our downtown economic recovery? We're not even talking about that infrastructure investment. So uh, that's something that is really important to me because it's something that, I know from experience what that looks like because I'm already making moves in my life. I have thermal solar on my home, you know, so I'm, you know, so I understand uh, how that also works in the neighborhood and how you have to get permitting and how obstacles are. And I really, really believe that I have a lot of experience and a lot of value to add there. Okay. Just for my listeners, what's EV? And for oh. electric vehicles, right? It is, yeah. Okay, exactly. that's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure, and I, I just wanted to make sure that my listeners know I had an idea, but I just wanted to clarify because that's what my role is here. Um, Absolutely. So let's talk about that because it is a priority for, I think there's a growing trend to move to a more electric, to a more environmentally friendly uh, mode of transportation, whether it be public transit, reducing the uh, cars on the road, whether it be EV, like you said, electronic ve electrical vehicles. How do we start the change? What is the priorities that you would want the next council to look at to start uh, fostering a friendlier atmosphere within the city of the EV vehicle, of, of electro electronic vehicles. Right. So, you know, it's interesting. It came to me actually on a trip, obviously pre-COVID. Um, but, you know, when I was away uh, traveling for work, um, I saw in, uh, in, in a large city uh, how uh, there were electric vehicle stations right at public parking. And so you have this opportunity where there were, you know, blocks where there were electric vehicle uh, charging stations at public parking spaces. And then there were just your, your traditional uh, parking spaces. And I thought to myself, 
Well, that would really that would really service the needs of, of Calgarians. And certainly I know a lot of folks in, in my ward who are, again, already transitioning. Uh, at least one car, maybe out of two, is an electric vehicle. Um, but, but there is such a thing as, you know, range limitations. So when you're in your car and suddenly you're, you know, you've got an unexpected errand to run or something's, something's going on, oh, I don't have enough charge. I'm not going to be able to do that. That is a barrier. That's a barrier to transition. And because we can't just go to the gas station and get gas, you can't just go and, you know, you know, top up your, your uh, battery life either. So I think we need to be looking at infrastructure that way for that reason. I think that's really going to, that's really going to help a lot of folks make it easier and seem more viable to them as an option. Uh and as, as someone who used to work in the North, who uh, worked in Northern uh, Alberta, there's a large uh, push right now to set up electrical charging stations within the municipalities. I, I thought coming to uh, the large city like Calgary, you would see that on a regular basis, but it, I was very shocked to not see us transitioning to a more environmentally friendly vehicle charging stations within our city. Why do you think it's taken the city so long? Is it just not a priority for them? Or is it just that we usually react instead of be proactive on issues like this? It's really probably both, to be honest. Um, but I am a proactive person uh, in my personal life and then in, as my, in my business. Um, it, it sound, I know when, when folks think of, you know, a business like mine as a retail clothing store, it seems maybe sort of, you know, just sort of um, fluffy or, you know, sort of fun, but it's a really serious business. I spend a lot of time doing market research, understanding trends, um, more than just fashion trends, right? This is like understanding economic trends, understanding industry trends, um, how people are working impacts what they need to buy in their lives. I need to know that before they've even made the transition in their jobs. And I believe that that's also part of, of the priority for council should be understanding what's coming, not what's already here. We have to be always looking at exactly that. We have to be proactive and we have to be almost ahead of the curve in that sense, right? Uh, yeah. That's where leadership comes from. One of the uh, big public transit issues that the next council will be facing is Hopefully, after hearing about it so many times over the last four years or two years that I've been in Calgary, is the Green Line. The Green Line is going to be something that you will have to deal with. We are seeing the province wanting more, uh, more. they want more uh, information all around it. Uh, we are seeing budget overruns. How do you, as someone who is a fact-based based decision maker who looks at the environmental impact of potentially removing cars from roadways and getting people on public transit. How do you see yourself working with the next council to ensure this project finally goes ahead and we finally get a shovel in the ground so we can start not talking about it and building it? Right. So again, <laughs> I think, I know it's such a, it is really, it's, it feels like it's been, you know, almost a decade of conversation around the green line. Right. And it's, and it's sort of gone through many different processes and certainly different uh, iterations of itself. Um, I can say this for sure. I, I really do appreciate where the province is coming from, where they want to ensure that, that if they're going to be investing and they are, they're going to be an investment partner, right. In this, in this project, they want to know that we as a city are doing everything we can to ensure that the budget overruns are as minimal as possible. Uh, that's not to say they never occur. They do. It happens. Things change. And, you know, that's the cost of business sometimes. Um, but how do we really mitigate that? And how do we make that the lowest possible risk for cost overruns? I can appreciate all of those, all of those pieces from, from the province. They just want to make sure. And I think that's also in and of itself an opportunity to just go back, dot all the I's, cross all the T's and make sure we are really doing and being the most accountable to the taxpayer in this, in this area. Are the people of Ward 8 talking about this issue or is this not a major issue that Ward 8 residents are talking about? I'm not hearing it very much from a, from, you know, sort of like a practical perspective in terms of use. Um, but I think there's an appreciation and an understanding that, you know, infrastructure and, and this type of infrastructure is really important to the city. And again, it goes back to investment, right? It goes back to bringing new talent and bringing new investment into our city. We need to show that we are still a city that is moving forward, 
by moving forward, we have to be offering and moving forward with infrastructure projects. We can't just, you know, pack it in because we're, we're too scared to keep growing. We need to show that we still will do that. Um, if we aren't investing in our city, who's going to invest in our city? Which will lead by true, example. True. Um, one area that uh, we talked about business attraction, but we will need to be worrying about retention and attraction of new residents. I, I'm not sure about Ward 8. I haven't been down there since, probably in about three or four months, but in Ward 10 where I am, we are seeing for sale signs go up. They are leaving the city. How do you envision retaining our current residents, attracting new residents, but also, and this is the key kicker here, keeping kids who are going off to university here within the city. I've had that exact conversation with so many folks and it's awesome. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of opportunity for conversation there, but I can tell you that I have spoken with several uh, new residents, newcomers from Ontario into Calgary. They love it here. They absolutely love it here, um, both in my ward and also in my business, because I have the opportunity to chat with all kinds of people who come through uh, my store on a regular basis. They absolutely love it here. So they come for work. They come because it's affordable. So they're leaving a place that's really expensive to own a home or, or to rent. Uh, they're coming to a city that's affordable. And they arrive here and they're absolutely enamored by everything that we offer, how clean the city is, the uh, access to park space and all kinds of great recreation and other things that we offer, but they don't know about it until they get here. And that is part of branding. We have got to brand this city in a different way, in a new way that shows the rest of Canada and shows, as I was saying earlier, shows the rest of the world that we are a city of innovation, of prosperity, of new, of growth, of green space, of all these amazing things that we know because we live here already. I think that by definition is going to effectively um, shed a new light and bring a positive energy to the city. And people will feel differently about living here and coming here. I'm glad you talked about that because one of the other areas that uh, seems to be a priority for a lot of people right now is the priority around houselessness population. And one of the key concern is we are seeing an increase or an influx of houselessness, people coming to our city. And I, I don't want to say staying put, but coming into our community and there's the, the PR issue of, okay, does it make us look like a bad community because we have such a large houselessness population? How do you want the next council to address that issue of the increase of houselessness uh, population within our communities? That's a really, that's a really large, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a really big topic and it's sort of hard to probably articulate just, you know, in a sort of precise or concise way. Um, obviously, working with the folks who are in those communities already, they understand that uh, that they understand that problem better than I ever could, for example. Um, and so we need to listen to them and we need to understand how actually the city can do its best work in that area. Um, I would never purport to come to the table and say, oh, I've got all the solutions to all these problems. I don't. And that's, I think, again, where for me, I'm all about getting all perspectives. I absolutely think that is the most important role for a counselor is to really understand from every single angle, what is the most important, how do we solve a problem? Because from that conversation, we are gonna drive our best outcomes for everyone. Awesome. Um, I, I'm just, yet again, I'm conscious of time here and I wanted to just start wrapping up here, but let's put on our magic thinking hat. You are the successful candidate on October 18th. What is your first priority for yourself, for Ward 8, and for the city that you want to address at the first council meeting? First council meeting is going to be about our economic recovery. And in combination with that, it, we've got to talk about taxes. We just do. I just think they have to go hand in hand. Uh, I really do. And so um, absolutely, my, my top priority is going to be that, is economic recovery. In a little and bit what would be a successful first term 
for Cornelia? What would you want to make as a priority to ensure that gets done? And then at the end of your four, first four years, you can say, you know what? I'm happy that I got X done because it's bettering the city of Calgary. Uh, I think working with Calgary Economic Development, uh, definitely really understanding how how we are going to move the city forward again. I, I just think if I can lay the foundation and do the hard work, um, everything else is going to come a lot easier for whoever would succeed me for sure. Um, hopefully that means that some of the hard work would also bear fruit before the end of a term, uh, you know, but certainly there's a lot of hard work to do. There's no simple solution. There's no, you know, one, uh, you know, one answer to solve that problem uh, on day one, but certainly I'm ready to dig in and do the work for sure. Looking, we no one expected this pandemic to hit this, uh, hit the, the, uh, the world as it has. Um, in the first term, this is going to be a priority to recover from this. What would be a positive note to end on to say, you know what, we came through it because this indicator shows that we're recovering. This indicator of our taxes being lowered is here. What are the indicators that you want to see in your first term to ensure that we have officially recovered from this pandemic? Uh, obviously, just you know, sort of the basics of understanding employment rates or unemployment rates, right? So if we're we're going to know that right away. If we have folks working, that's going to be fantastic. Um, but I think also, um, I know that we are seeing uh, a decrease to your point earlier, we are seeing a, a decline in residents of that sort of 20 something age demographic where they're leaving and they're not coming back. And I think if we see an increase there, if we see a gain in that area, I think we're going to know that we're doing the right work and we're either attracting new, new residents or we're bringing some of them back. And I think that that's going to really set us up for the future well. Awesome. Uh, the last area that I want to talk about is why should you be the next city councillor for Ward 8? I should be the next city councillor for Ward 8 because I really care about community and I really care about Calgarians. Uh, this, and you'll have heard me say this before, but uh, this is not a job to me. It's not a, a career of, you know, just something I, you know, and the next step in my life. Uh, I've come to this really because I believe in public service and I really know I can do the right job for my ward um, through my experience as a business owner, of course, but certainly also as, as a member of my community. I'm here to really listen to the needs and address those concerns and do everything I can to make our quality of life better. Awesome. Uh, to ensure that, you, as this will be airing the second week of August, you'll have two months left until the uh, uh, election date, you will need volunteers, you will need help, you will need people to reach out to you. So I've got to ask the question, how do people do that? How can people get in contact with you if they have follow up questions from this interview, if they have, uh, if they want to help you, if they want to support you, how can they do that? There are a few ways. And that's a really great question. Yes. Yeah, so uh, visit my website. Uh, CorneliaWeeb.ca. Uh, there's lots of information there about myself, and that will be ongoing and updating throughout the entire campaign right till October 18th. If someone is interested in volunteering their time, uh, donating to the campaign, wanting a lawn sign, which is going to be really important, I think, this uh, election as well, um, you can sign up on the website. I have an email, of course, there as well, info at CorneliaWeeb.ca. It's also a great way just to reach out to the campaign team if you have questions or just want to even get involved or get some more information. Uh, social media also follow me, like, share, tag. I mean, that's that's the way we build awareness, right? And it's also it tells your friends and neighbors that you're supporting a candidate that you believe in. And I think that uh, personal endorsement uh, is is the most valuable type of endorsement that there is. Uh, for my listeners and to my viewers, Cornelia's website, uh, Facebook, uh, social media links, and the link for her email address will be in the show notes. I highly recommend that you go out, check her out. If you live in Ward 8, get involved, because I, I honestly believe this in this election, they always say this, but is the most consequential election that we have facing our city. So Cornelia, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I appreciate it as well. Thank you for having me today.